Let's get it. What's up? Welcome oh, back man. to the Opinion Hated Podcast. I'm Ace. Um, Joe, we back. Yeah, we back in the motherfucking building, man. Hopefully everybody out there doing good. That's you know all. what I'm saying? We appreciate them views and everything. You know, let's keep this shit going. You know, uh, like we want to start off today's show by saying rest in peace to Breonna Taylor. You know, and I got a little something for y'all real quick. Breonna Taylor was killed on March 13th, 2020 in Louisville, Kentucky. Three plainclothes police officers, detectives Miles Cosgrove and Brett Hankinson, as well as Sergeant John Mattingly, arrived at Taylor's apartment at 1 a.m. They were serving a no-knock search warrant for someone else, a suspect who was already in police custody. Kenneth Walker, Breonna Taylor's boyfriend and a licensed gun owner, fired off one shot fearing they were intruders. Police responded with more than 20 rounds of bullets into various places in the apartment, even shooting into neighboring homes. While only Detective Mattingly was shot in the leg, eight of these bullets hit and wrongfully killed Taylor in the middle of the night in her own home. Brianna Taylor was a 26-year-old emergency room technician who had dreams of becoming a nurse. Besides working as a first responder during the coronavirus pandemic at University of Louisville Health, Brianna was also a beloved girlfriend, daughter, and sister. She literally was the sweetest person ever. The car rides was fun with my sister. They're like the funnest oh, things ever. Yeah, I had friends when Fucked my sister up. passed away they were telling me like they admired our relationship. They wish they their and their siblings were like that. So you were very close. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that's a very unfortunate situation. You know, once again, we want to say rest in peace to Brianna Taylor. Yep. You know, you know, but uh, like Brianna Taylor, that's not the only story out here. You know, like it, it's many uh people out here and the world, you know, United States specifically, you know, all across this country is a lot of people that's going through a lot of, you know, uh, gun violence, suffering through a lot of things out here. And, you know, it's a lot of black men and women who suffer in front of police, you know. So, you know, we just want to say rest in peace to Breonna Taylor once again. Our prayers go out to the family too. Yes, sir. You know, but uh, tonight, you know, we got a very special show here, you know. We got a uh, guest. Yeah, we got a guest in the building tonight. You know what I'm saying? This is our first guest, by the way. You know, we got a lovely young woman by the name of Brandy Martin. You know what I'm saying? AKA Big Red, CEO of Big Red Entertainment. Found her no love on the platform and no love on the streets. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Let's welcome her to the show. How you doing? How you doing? That's what's up. Hello. I am Brandy Martin, CEO of Big Red Entertainment, and it is an honor to bring you No Love the Documentary. Can I get some tissue? <sighs> Hello everyone, my name is Brandy Martin, CEO of Big Red Entertainment, and it is an honor to bring you No Love the Documentary, dedicated to all the women, children, and men, unsolved and forgotten cases. We also are bringing you untold stories. This is real life emotion, real life people, real life victims, and real life stories. We are asking you to join us in honoring all of the children who are lost during gun violence, police brutality, sex trafficking, bullying, and negligence. These are the topics that we will be discussing in the No Love the Documentary. This documentary is written and produced by me, myself, Brandy Martin, and filmed and directed by Bases Loaded Productions. First off, I want to say um, thank you so much for sharing your platform with me um, and allowing me and all my team. We're not the whole cast, but majority of the cast is here. The right ones are here right now. So, yeah, it's dope. Thank you so much. Yeah, more than welcome. 
Yeah, and once again, you know, she has a documentary coming out called No Love on the Platform, No Love on the Streets. Yes. You know, it's going to be yeah, coming to y'all up. real soon, you know. Like, uh, you you know, you got a Go release to. day in mind or something right now? Well, actually, um, I would love to release it next month, but COVID is not working with me as far as um, the movie theaters. I actually want to release it with a red carpet, the first, just the first episode, because there are six episodes to this season. Right. Okay. But um, I got a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. As so, always. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. if I can't yeah. do the show, I'm going to do the drive-in. If I can't do the drive-in, I'm going to do a rental space. So either way it goes, I'm going to do something. Yeah. I'm going to do something, and then I'm going to get it out Be on the lookout, too. She's going to do yeah. something. Yes, yeah, yes, And I know yes. we got an invite over here at Opinion Hater, right? Oh, most definitely, <laughs> most definitely, most yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah. I would most love for you guys support. to cover um, support, and also make sure that y'all cover, you know, Cause y'all actually getting the chance to see it through the whole process. Right. So I mean, who better to tell the making of it but you guys? Y'all yeah. around for it. Right. But yeah, I'm here representing um, a lot of different things, but I'm not here alone. Um, I did bring a lot of people with me. So before I fully introduce myself, I would love for you to get to know a lot of the people that are involved in No Love the documentary. Yeah, I want to thank y'all for coming on too. Let y'all introduce yourself. Okay, we're gonna start with um, passion. Um, I'm Passion, Dreamer 515, Big Red Entertainment Artist. Uh, I am a part of the No Love on the Platform and No Love on the Street documentary soundtrack. And I am a cast member. And I actually am the co-producer of it, so yeah. Okay, well, basically, you know what I'm saying, we here today, you know what I'm saying, to shine a little light on... You know what's going on out here in the streets. You know yep. what I'm saying. And uh, before we continue back on, you know, I want to touch bases on you know this whole Breonna Taylor situation. You know what I'm saying because you know I'm not really understanding you know uh, what that verdict was about. You know, it, it's just like you know I definitely feel like if a motherfucker run up in my house, you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna blow his ass back outside like yep. Andro say. You know what I'm saying, and That's it's right, just man. like. You know, if you laying down in the crib and you with your lady and, you know, you hear somebody coming into your house unannounced and, you know, and, and it's just like you're not going, you know, you're not going to, you know what I'm saying, accept them with open arms. Hell no, nah, man. Who would, you bro? Know? Like, would? like for real, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, Mr. Walker, you know what I'm saying? He did what every person or every man, you know, should be out here doing. You protecting your household. And Kentucky is a open carry state. You know, so uh, when it comes to that, you know, I feel like that brother did the right thing. You know, you got to protect your home. You know what I'm saying? And Malcolm X say, you know, black women is the most unprotected people in this world, period. You know what I'm saying? The most neglected or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to figure out, like, you know, what what can we do to p- protect black women out here? Shit, stand up for them, bro. You know? But another thing about this is no knock shit. I mean, how could you announce yourself if we sleep, bro? Fuck, we gonna hear you at the door if we sleep. Yeah, and then on top of that, it was a no knock warrant. So therefore, you know, you're not you're not addressing yourself when you come to that. You know that that's the whole setup for that. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I know with some people that probably look on the other side, whereas it's just like you know them officers was defending themselves, but at the same time, it's just like nigga, you walk into somebody's household. One o'clock in the morning. Street you clothes know, on. You know, you're not saying who you is. Like, what person in their right mind would be acceptable to that? You know, nobody. You know, so if you let off a shot and then you feel like your life is in danger, that's just like if I break into your career, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you, I break into your career, I kick your door in. What you going to do? We shoot, man. We shoot. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Far, you know, you said what? That's it, bro. You ain't, you ain't That's it. Here, That's all. You know That's what I'm saying? I'll break into your crib, you know what I'm saying, and you let off a shot at me, and therefore, you know, now I'm in a situation where it's just like I'm coming in, so it's either me or you, and I let off them shots, but then I end up killing somebody in the process. Don't that make me a murderer? Do. Don't that make me a murderer? Do. Like, it don't matter if it was premeditated, if it was an accident, or whatever the case is. You know, murder is murder. You know, it, it's just Perfect. no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Perfect. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, like all these killings and shit got to stop. You know what I'm saying? People out here losing, losing their lives every day. Mm-hmm. You know? And, you know, that's why we had the cast of No Love on the Platform, No Love on the Streets in here. 
You know what I'm saying? Real Starting shit, with man. this brother Prince Egypt over here. You know what I'm saying? How you feeling today? I'm like listening to everything y'all saying. Just sucking it in. Seeing how I feel about certain things. It's a lot different than other people. I'm uh come kicking in my dough. That's it, bro. What about you, Tiffany? Hey, how Tiffany you doing? Frank. I'm Tiffany Frank. I'm a, a member and volunteer of Purpose Over Pain, an organization of parents who've lost kids to gun violence. Mm -hmm. So I'm just a supporter of the community, a supporter of um, the parents, and uh, also uh, advocate and um, I guess bring awareness to the different issues that plague our community. So. And speak that again. Purpose of the pain? Purpose over pain. Purpose over pain. Mm -hmm. You can uh, follow me on my Facebook page, Tiffany Frank. Always bringing awareness to the issues, unsolved cases, and et cetera. So. Yeah. Support that. Support that. Most definitely. Yes, indeed. Next to you. My name is Siobhan DeMorris. I'm the mother of Jasmine Robeson that was murdered June 5th, 2020. Um, she was 15 years old. I live in South Village. She was murdered in her house in the bedroom. Um, it's no justice for her. Mm. So your beliefs as far as the gun violence in any case, I mean, your situation is a little different, but as far as the Brianna Taylor, because we're touching on that as well, mm -hmm. um, as far as the protecting your home and your, your family. Yes. You, you, you agree with that? Yes, I do. Okay. Ola. What's up, y'all? Name Ocho Mexico, I'm an artist. Part of the No Love, the documentary soundtrack, and also a cast of No Love, the documentary. And I agree with everything. Self-explanatory. You kick in the door, you know? No. It is what it is. Self-explanatory. You, you should. You should. You know what I mean? Production manager. That's right. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all follow that and y'all support that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Man. And, uh... You know, the, the way I'm feeling about that is it's a lot of bullshit that's involved behind that, you know. Yes. And, like, all these people that's here with us tonight, they share similar stories. They and, do. you know, as far as this Breonna Taylor situation is concerned, it's just like, I mean, you know, like, somebody has to be reprimanded for that, you know. Yes. It's just like, you know, you what, what's that, the wonton and, and, and endangerment or something? Like, I didn't even know what the fuck that was. I thought I needed some... <laughs> Crab ran yeah, going with that or something. Right. Yeah, fried yeah, rice. Like, what is a wonton? You know? Right. Sound crazy. You feel me? You know, like, wonton what is that? Wonton is a, um, a wrap, actually, with cream cheese and crab. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what What's that shit? is. Wonton. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I feel like some jobs you just ain't allowed to make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Doctors, pilots, you feel me? Police officers, you, you know. Uh, especially Unexpected. police officers. I mean, you know, when you sign enough for a job, you know, like right. that's pretty much the job that you're supposed to do, and you're supposed to handle that job to the best of your abilities. Sure. You know, you for know, sure. it's not really too much room for error when you take these certain jobs, especially when you're a police yeah. officer or whatever. You know, so it's just like you know, it's just like when you go into these certain situations. Or a matter of fact, you know, maybe we should think about you know when it comes to these no knock laws, maybe those should be. Out, out law. with that, yeah. yeah. Out with that shit. Prince Eiji, we got you something know. you want to say, bro? I'm, I'm doing a no fan of 12. 12? Yeah. Uh, so, that's, I'm not going to even pretend like that. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the hell you think about that. I'm not going to fan of that. You sit back and you contemplate this thought. Seriously. Think about what they're doing. You think about what they're showing. You think about how they doing things. What's next? Right. What's, you know, next? what's next? That's a good question. You know what's, what's next? Itself. It's it's it, things are a progression. What's next? And like if y'all been listening to this show and you know seeing what what I've been saying, you know I, I'm personally not a fan of the police. No. You know and uh you know the way I feel about certain things, it, it's just like I feel like a lot of these laws is outdated. Yeah. You know, we live in a modern times with yeah. ancient history laws. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's time for a lot of things to be updated out here. You know, so pretty much when it comes to that shit, it's just like, you know, my nigga, why are we still no knocking but, out But here? all them laws, you know what I'm saying, was constructed and, and when nobody fuck with black people. 
Facts <laughs> in case women, you feel yeah. me? So, of course, them laws is outdated, bro. You know, we need to get rid of them motherfuckers. That's just how I feel. Because it don't apply to society right now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The, the structure, of the, the needs of the people. Yeah. And then you got people out here marching and protesting. You got, like, Tamika Mallory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If y'all don't know who she is, y'all go check her out. Follow her on Instagram. Her, I don't man. know her personally, but, you know, I know that woman is out here representing you know, man, strong black woman. Man. You know, she out here with Trade the Truth and my son and everybody else. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she trying to spread the word and the message. And, you know, and but I'm also the type of person that feel like you can't continue preaching to these white folks. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't continue preaching to people that don't give a fuck about what's going on outside of their own culture. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a it's a big difference when you out here and you're the person that's causing the harm right. versus the person that's getting the uh, harm inflicted upon them. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, you don't really understand that struggle. You know what I'm saying? What's that? Do y'all believe in the blue lives? Blue, blue lives. lives? Blue lives. I, I like the way you said it. I like the way you said it. You said it as if it doesn't exist. But do you believe in the blue lives? Because it's going to fall to my next thing. I mean, uh, shit, as far as like the blue lives, yeah, you talking I mean, about the police, they ain't shit. You talking about their lives? I you mean, know? to be honest with you, man, I still feel like at the end of the day, that uniform do go up, come off, and they do have families just like we do. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I'm just ain't going to say fuck the blue lives because they is humans as well. You feel me? They people. I'm just going to keep it a buck. Man, it ain't no blue lives. Your job, your choice of job don't make your life better than mine. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> you chose to go work to be 12 I could choose to be a vice lord, okay, mm-hmm. whatever, okay? You it don't make, you, you know what I'm saying, right? It don't make your job. It don't make you all of a sudden, nah, 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 nah. I, I, and I understand what exactly saying. what you're saying, bro. Because, like, at what point in time do you hold them people accountable? You say, exactly. they're, the po- they're, they're the police. Oh, they sh- they announce themselves with a no, not one, and it's wanting them. They, they, they announce themselves with a no, not one. The purpose of a no, not one is you don't have to announce yourself. Exactly. Back. My okay. Point exactly, bro. So we don't say the people we said twelve. They lives matter. They lives matter. My sister twelve. Okay, <laughs> real real talk. And this ain't no front. They know me. My sister twelve. Her. Okay, the twelve side of her. Okay. What I'm saying is your choice of job. People choose these jobs, and then we automatically put them on a pedestal and act like you know what I'm saying. Everything that they do. Don't come with mistakes like they don't make mistakes, but they in the job where they can't make mistakes. So any mistake that you make like you do with a boxer, I don't see how you can sit back and hold a boxer more accountable than you hold a cop. If a boxer beat me up, his ass going to jail. You know why? Because you know your hands is a deadly weapon and you ain't got no business putting your paws on Prince Egypt. (laughs) (laughs) you're gonna tell me a police officer that get paid by the people mm. who sit up there and make a pledge can sit back and then take somebody life and and not have anything to worry about sure. but we get mad and i'm just gonna say this is me because that's why i be quiet sometimes I mean, peaceful you know what I'm saying? We get mad at the mob. Look, we get mad at the mob. I'm not giving no big ups to the mob, but I tell you this. Police didn't do that. To, police knew what the mob was doing right, but they knew what the mob would come do to them if they got down bogus on the mob. They didn't do it to them. You know why? Because they know, oh, we may get him. But he got 30 people we don't know just going to come and get my mom and my daughter and my yep. family and do to them. And do, do unto others as you will have one do unto you. That's right. Okay, so evidently you want me to do this to you. Or in my Bible, do unto others before white people do unto you. That's what I've been learning. And that's what I've been writing inside myself. I'm not no racist. I, you know what? I am a racist. Because the, 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 the definition of a racist is person that studies race. You <laughs> get true, bro. Yeah. No, no, the definition, the definition the first of a racist, racist is, is a, having knowledge within one's race. Mm. That's what I'm you know saying. I don't hate, I don't hate. You know what I'm saying? People. White people. You know what I'm saying? Purple right. people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I was once like Captain Kirk. You know, purple, pink. 
You, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know what I'm saying? saying? For the long, cause it's not like, fuck all the police, mm-hmm. but it's fuck all police because when you look at me, you see a threat. Exactly. You know what I'm so right. if it's fuck me, it's fuck you. Fuck it's you. me. And when yeah. your do, and when your Same brother is wrong, you're not standing up to say, "Oh, cause you got yeah. this mm-hmm. blue shield." Yeah. That's why I asked about yeah. blue lives yeah. because you know what I'm saying? They reborn under this protective coat. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That they can do no wrong and no wrong will happen to us no matter what we do. And that's the perfect do, example you know what I'm saying? To, to these people. This so that's why they can have you in the air. They steady mm-hmm. doing, man, just like this up, got his hands up, police behind him, look at him, run towards him, drop kick him, and because he didn't fall, he got extra man, tackle him, and wind up tasing him or shooting him. You know what I'm saying? Even when you, even when you surrender. Yeah, and that's how it goes. They go with that force. You know what I'm saying? They live by that cover. Because, like, if I leave here right now and I get pulled over, it's not going to be one car. It's not going to be two cars. Oh, we seen it. We witnessed that the other day. Three. It's going to be like four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, yeah. nine, ten of them motherfuckers. Shit, man. Yeah, we witnessed that last yeah. Sunday um, in front of the studio when we went left here, left you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually went to record some of the soundtrack. And a young man and um, two Caucasian ladies were stopped, and uh, it was about 10 cops mm-hmm. just for a regular traffic stop, and they had to let them go. Phoebe, what's your views on the Breonna Taylor or anything around it? Okay. Announce yourself. Hello, well. everyone. Well, my name is Phoebe L. Crape. I'm the um, production manager for No Love, the documentary. I was blessed to be called by Brandy to come and work on this um, particular uh, heartfelt uh, film. Um, actually, I have family members members that have been killed by gun violence, uh, negligence, and so on and so forth. I have family members that are part of the police force. Okay. And I mean, I have, um, I wanted to go back when you mentioned about laws. Mm-hmm. The laws were not made for us. Yes. Not at all. They, they were not. Times have changed. People have changed. Political views have changed. But the laws have not. Those that have come into place only service us just a snippet. That's an old saying, snippet, so you know I'm old. So, But it, it only serves us just a bit, not yes. much. But the laws are not meant for us at all. And that's, that's really hurtful. I mean, when I was in the university, it was taught that from my uh, black history, it was taught that we as uh, African-American black individual, I- individuals were not considered humans. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it's a lot that plays on how we're coming. We're, it's, like, it's like a birth. We're, we're being renewed. So the vision that we're seeing or the veil that's being lifted under our eyes now we have nothing but questions. But our people was, you know, yeah, they fought back then, but they didn't have any strength to fight. Mm. But now, as all the generations, have, have they changed, especially the <coughs> ones we see now, the generations actually, they're, they're mad for our people. They're mad for our people, they're mad for themselves, and they're mad for others, their family members. Yeah. So you have a lot of anger that's going on with the young generation. It's just been building up. It's, it, that's that's mm-hmm. all it is. Mm-hmm. But what's lacking with our younger generation mm-hmm. is the fact that they have no leadership. No structure. Mm-hmm. No. Guidance. I understand Guidance. the anger. I understand, you know, you walk around mad for no reason, which is really a reason. But because we don't know, it's no reason. Mm-hmm. But they're tired for our people. They're tired for themselves. They're tired when they look at their mother. They're tired when their father just don't, you know, like he just give up too. So why are you giving up? So now they're ready to fight. Anyway, anyway necessary. Do I agree? No, I do not. Everything you have to, when you're walking in a line, either you're going to walk with everyone in the line or you're going to be different to stand out to do something different outside the line. I know you all have seen some kind of picture meme where you see everybody walking one way and you see just one or two people walking the other way. You got to choose which way you want to walk. Do you want to mm. follow everyone? Mm. Do I want to follow the crowd that I could just go whoop on even the innocent people? Because remember, there's black about people about that get killed that's totally life, innocent. You know, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, so choose. we have to think about all of that, the choices that we make. And I mean, I know it's not my show. I'm getting off. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I just. It's the platform for that. So. Like, the platform for that. Go ahead and speak your truth. So. 
speak but your I, I'm, I'm honored that Brandy called me. I mean, I had we worked together on other projects prior, yeah. and I was the production manager. I'm a host, you know, of a, a, a talk show. I'm a host of Video Nation. I just don't. I didn't understand why she chose. Like, oh, I was, you know, thinking about you two days ago. I was supposed <laughs> to call you two days ago. Really? So, but just the fact that what she what she's building up from her own experience to help others. It's like you had no idea that I experienced what I've experienced, a nephew or cousin or whatever the case might be, a negligence, a daughter almost losing her life, you know, um, for a motorcycle accident that's caused from another car, you know, whatever the case might be. But she didn't know that. I never expressed that to her. So just the fact that sometimes things are divine purposes, purpose, and the connection, and I think the connection of meeting everyone thus far is this is going to be an awesome. It's right. awesome documentary yes. because everything you tear up, you you fall apart, you know, just everything. And sometimes you just shock, like you that really happened. Bring everybody together. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. That's right. So let me ask exactly. you a question: sure. Like, are you not in agreement with all the looting and the rioting that's been going on now, or you feel like that's part of the cause? Okay. Okay, I have a twofold on that. One. Okay. Okay. So, in my opinion, because I'm not a political individual the person that pay attention to a lot. People were set in that position to start the riot. And it wasn't our people. That's right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right. So it's not that I do not agree with tearing down what someone worked hard for. That's just right. like, you and me, no matter what race we are, they just come to your house and they steal all your property and you work very hard for it. Right. So these people built their business. No matter how they did it, whether it's daddy's money or whatever the case might be, they built their business. It's this. And we have no right to come and destroy their property. Yes, when in slavery, they had the opportunity, they did whatever they wanted to do to us. But mind you, our people wanted to get out of that. Our ancestors didn't want no part of that. That's why they started building their own business. Mm -hmm. But then now, you're not paying attention to who you're destroying. Now you're destroying your own people. So yeah, I frown upon that because mm -hmm. lack of leadership. Yeah. It's totally it's like a leadership. Leadership. We ain't really had too many leaders in a long time. I mean, we can't have leaders, bro. They take them but, from us. I mean, every time we, we get a leader, bro. But they, personally, they the way I feel about when it comes to the looting and rioting, you know, I feel like that's a small price to pay. Because, you know, if you remember Tulsa, Oklahoma with Black Wall Street, you know what I'm saying? Oh. They tore that shit down. And then, like, if you remember, um, like, I don't even remember what area that was in Philadelphia where they dropped bombs on that community. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They yep. destroyed that. You know what I'm saying? And then I also look at it like, you know, when you steady killing black people, it's like you're killing property. Like, it's nothing to you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's back to the wanton endangerment where it's just like, uh, you know, like, them motherfuckers just got, <laughs> they got time for a wall. You know what I'm saying? Or it's just like y'all recklessly out here shooting. You know, they, they don't really have a particular aim. And I, I just feel like, would you feel the same if, like, what if that neighbor had got killed in that in that other apartment building? What if a small child got killed? What if an infant got killed? You know what I'm saying? Or what if a white person had got killed in that situation? Would it still been the same way? You know, like, no, I'm just talking no, no, about in all, general. You know what I'm saying? And just piggybacking yeah, off the, uh, yeah. the situation in Kentucky, you know? Yeah. Like, as far as, like, the looting and rioting, you know, especially, like, the first time it happened out here in Chicago, you know, I was just like, it is what it is. You know, go ahead and do what you got to do. Because I know people is upset and angry and they tired, you know. It's just like, you know, especially, like, with me, you know, I've been dealing with the police since I was a shorty. You know, it's just like, you know, especially, like, when you out here and you just traveling and you minding your business and you just doing whatever it is you're doing and people pull up on you, strong arm you, Snatching you up out the car, slamming you on the ground, you know, running your pockets and all that. It's just like all that shit is unnecessary, you know. And I, I just feel like when you're in a certain position and you got that type of power, I feel like certain people abuse that, you know. So it, it's just like, you know, yeah, you know, when you out here and you tearing up these communities and everything of that nature, especially when it's in your own community, yeah, what are you going to do? Community, man. The grocery stores and you tearing the down the mom and pop and shop. Stores, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, we yeah. need that. We need that. What you think, Tia? What's your views on it? Hey, y'all doing? My name is Tia Songbird. I'm an artist at Big Red Entertainment. Check us out with the No Love documentary and soundtrack.
I have a feature song on there called Letter to You. Um, my first thing I want to say is um, about our people. We lack identity. And when you lack identity, if you don't know who you are, how can you be what you are supposed to be? You can't be something you lack knowledge in. So I blame us. I'm going I'm 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 not finna blame the police. They're doing what they want to do. They doing how they move how they want to move. Well, we can't move how we want to move. We got all this fire. This is the, the generation now. I'm proud of them. Whether the looting came, whether whatever, because we could speak on the ancestors. They had fear. They feared death. These children don't have no fear. What they lack is identity and direction. Yes. That's it. That's right. yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I can't blame them for the fire that's built up inside of them, just like the fire built up inside the police officers. I can't blame them for expressing themselves but don't know where to place that expression. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's all it is. It's a misplacement of anger, a misplacement of hurt, a misplacement of not knowing who you are. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I've been on this little spiritual thing lately, and the more I dig back, the more that fire building inside of me, I want to start a riot, you know? <laughs> but, um, I ain't going to start no riots, y'all. <laughs> well, I'm not. You know, I might be the, the reincarnation of Harriet Tubman, y'all never know. But, um, so, yeah, I want to touch bases on that. Even with, um, being a prejudiced person, why do we always look for acceptance and validation from another who is not of us. Ain't that what I was just talking about? Why? 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 We're, we're always looking for them to accept us. But they don't, it, it don't take them. It take us. And I hear so many people, we are God's chosen people. Well, if you know that, then act like, like that. If you have knowledge in that, teach right. that. Reach out. Say your name one more time. Tia Songbird. Tia Songbird. Okay. Like, you know, and I, I was just recently telling, you know, this brother and, you know, the viewers, you know, not too long ago, you know, I, I feel like it's getting to the point where we need to stop telling people that the white man is holding us back and holding us. us down and everything. You know what I'm saying? And it sounds like you talking about we need to be more accountable for yeah, ourselves. Yeah, we need to take accountability Another. for it. It, it takes it all of us. Accountability. I, I was just speaking to someone about the children these days, and they were speaking on um, um, how the children lack respect. And I said, I mean, if you take a child, right, if you take a child, and this child has to learn like everybody else has to learn. So if I take this child and this child gets to acting up and I say to this child, little bad motherfucker, then you turn around and teach it, this little bad bastard. Then you turn around somebody else. What are you instilling in the child? Exactly. So by the time he give up age to feel like he can think for himself, he think he a bad motherfucker. Exactly. He think he ain't shit. We instilled that in him. You have to get respect to get respect. I stand for the children when I say this because I was a child myself. Mm -hmm. And I went through abuse from adults. At hospitals, everything. Teachers. You know what I'm saying? So I know it's two sides to a story. That's right. You can't always expect the adult to be honest about your child. Then we, what we do? First thing we do, we don't even want to hit a child. They don't even have a voice. That's right. If we keep stifling their voices, we don't know who they're supposed to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? If we keep leading them, a lot of these suicides come from trying to please the next person. Yeah. They can't be who yeah. they want to be. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to be something somebody else wants them to be. You don't think kids get stressed out? They're human just like we are human. Exactly. And just like we're talking about the police when it comes towards us, the superior, inferior, we are not superior over our children. We are equal. That's right. We're supposed to raise them in a way that they should walk. But if you don't know how to walk, how you going to teach them how to walk? You feel me? And that come from, that's the biggest generational curse ever. That's the biggest generational curse. No identity. No identity at all. And that's funny because, you know, like, you see all these different cultures, you know what I'm saying, especially out here within the city. You know, you see the Puerto Ricans, they had a culture. The Mexicans, they had a culture. The Asians, right, they had a culture. You know, everybody had a culture, and they had something to identify with. But what do black folks identify with? But the crazy with? thing about it is all them cultures want to be like us, though. No, you know all those mean? cultures are us. Thank you. Those are Thank our you. cultures. They just, they, the everything. cultures come from us. Like when you see these white no. people, I mean, the way they dress, the way they talk, man, I mean, 
the music. But the thing everything. is, is that's because they put time into their cultures. Mm -hmm. They put they put energy into their cultures. Mm -hmm. What they learn, we don't take the time to read. Mm -hmm. We don't take the time yeah. to go dig and find those type of things. The most powerful thing I've learned in the last three weeks is about ancestors. Okay. And that's what they stole from us. The knowledge of who you are. Mm -hmm. They got us praying to they God. We don't know who we praying to. Exactly. That's right. We don't know. That's right. So he ain't listening to us. We ain't talking to the right person. We talk to who they told us to talk to. Yeah. And I don't like that with us. We're Remember quick to follow what they ago. say instead of going to research for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But ancestors, is our that's the closest to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You have us you know, in this life, humans. Yeah. You have ancestors. Then you have spiritual guides. Then you have Orishas. Then you have the Most High God. But the ancestors is closest to you. Speak to your ancestors. Start talking. Start doing your little cleansing and everything you got to do. They're going to lead you through the way for you to find out who you are personally. You know what I'm saying? This stuff comes, this, it's a generational curse. And I think it's time for us to watch our children and figure out what's, why they're not in fear. You know what I'm saying? Because we need to be standing behind them and we need not to be in fear. You know what I'm saying? We need to respect our children just like we want them to respect us. That's the only way you're not going to, if, if you don't respect the person, how you expect them to follow you? So I got a question for everybody. I mean, what y'all expect us to do, man? I mean, they looting, they marching. What's the next step? Take some change. Communicate. Yep. Communicate. I mean, sometimes we speak to not to listen. Okay. So we mm. have to communicate. And we're, there are... <laughs> Children, are, it's like they're, you know, people just reach out for you. They're calling out to you without calling out mm -hmm. to you. They have all this anger. We have to communicate. Sometimes a person, I don't want to sit down. I don't want to talk. I want to, you just like, well, what is it? What is really going on with you? If, if you keep with that softness, eventually it's going to come down. But because they, the voice will carry, the body language get a little ugly a little bit, and we feel disrespected. So instead of letting them know that, oh, your whole Earl is pissing me off, instead, I understand you're angry. So what is it? You're not walking out this room until you tell me what's really wrong with you. Oh, you going to bounce? You want to roll on the floor? Oh, you going to knock your head against the wall? What you going to do? I still love you. So instead, we don't communicate that. We get mad right with them, ready to fight them. You know, so I think too. communication. We tired too. You know, a lot of parents that have children... You know, we had our children very young. I had my ch my first mm -hmm. at 21. But it's like, it's children, like they say, children having children, but you have to think about it. This is not an issue that's going on in 2020. This is an issue that has been going on. Yeah. This yeah. Is, has been going on. Yeah. you looking been at grandparents on. that have hang-ups and that, um, from incest and different things that were going yeah. on in the home. And certain things like, I, um, to go back, I can't remember everything you guys said, but like you said, the laws are not made for us. When you think about it, also, um, you know, I might be the only person feel like this. A lot of things we were taught by our parents were taught strictly off of what they dealt with. Mm -hmm. And it, it, mm -hmm. it really can't help us now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we're teaching habits and we're teaching like, you remember that old saying? Uh, you remember how they say, put that turpentine in there. We teaching things that have been taught to time. us. And, and it's just like when you reflect back to the history, when you reflect back to the Bible, all the things that you are being taught are things that have been taught and put out for generations and generations. So you're looking at angry parents. I'm an angry parent. I will, I will be the first to say this. When my children piss me off, I get pissed off. You know what I'm saying? You know why I come from that? Because at one point, I can speak from both sides. It was two parents in the home. And even when there were two parents in the home, I had a very stern husband. He can look and blink and my children would. But mother, I got to point my finger, got to... I got to do a bit, a little more. And that just goes back to everything, every aspect in my life. Me being a woman, I got to be that way in order to get heard. I even get understood. We've been fighting to get heard for years. Like this is not a 2020 issue. This has been going on forever. As far as the loon thing, I think that was a bunch of bullshit. I think our people use it as a way to get free shit. I don't think it had nothing to do with the fact that the issues that were going on, I think we used those issues to cover up behind because guess what we have so many people right here in our city that hit the streets that died on the streets in front of our face mm -hmm. on right crime chasers chasing everywhere martin tuning everywhere it's a body mm -hmm. 
why we didn't rally, why we didn't loot then. Yeah. It took for an incident Especially to happen. For these kids. And it took me Way to, uh, what's his name, Dreadhead Cowboy. And he, you know he's a part of this yeah, documentary. Man. Shout out to Dreadhead. Dreadhead, you know? yeah, man. You know, why like, did they take his horse? Yeah. You know? Mine, too. What said did he, it was what fatigued did he do any, at first. What did he do anything sense. wrong? Do y'all remember when, and, and I'm not a racist. I love all my people. You know what I'm saying? It's all about people and character. I love whoever, whoever rocks and rolls with me, I rock and roll with them. I'm not going to make white people pay for some stuff that happened years before that. Because I got some white friends that love me for real. Yeah. And they'll get up and stand behind any black crowd and say, I love her for real. Right. So I'm not going to say every person that way. I'm saying each individual, anytime you do any type of act that is not of human kind or something that has malice intent, you should be stood accountable, no matter what color you are. Because in the end, you think about it. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Yeah, we get the hit of it. They show the most stuff because they want to show the bad sides of the blacks. They're always going to promote that. Even the dark side, they're very rarely going to show the good side to us. But I'm going to tell y'all something. For real, for real. There's white people. There's Chinese people. There's Puerto Ricans. We're all dying. We're all dying. We're all suffering from different issues. No matter if we're getting hit it with the most part from the gun violence and the police brutality. The Mexicans, they, the president tried to build a whole wall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we are being attacked. Everyone is being attacked. It's just by different things. Does it mean we're affected different? Hell no. We all, we're tired. Like Phoebe said, we're tired for our ancestors. These children are pissed off because they didn't watch mama uh, putting noodles and crackers together to feed them. They daddy then ran off. He didn't want to take care of the next family. You know what I'm saying? Our they daddy was one of the biggest drug dealers and never even brought bread to the crib. So they mad. Hell, I'm mad. I'm missing a tricycle. And I'm 43 years old and I still ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? I'm mad yeah, too. Her shit. I'm missing the power. I'm mad with. too. You know what I'm saying? But that does uh, not give sad. me the right to right. put to right. bring to the rest of the, my time on here on earth to make every day a bad day mm -hmm. or to make other people's lives a bad time. Mm -hmm. That doesn't give me the right. So I agree off and on with it. I feel like our people, we have through the way as so many other people for why we can't be who we are. We know who the fuck we are. We know who we are when we're stealing. We know who we are when we getting 10K. We know who we are. We getting 20K. We know who we are. I know who the hell I am. I stand up and I represent No Love, the documentary. I know who I am. It's all about finding yourself and discovering if you choose to represent the good part of you or the bad part of you. Exactly. That's right. That makes a lot of sense. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, I don't know what y'all but that's just the idea. You know what I'm saying? No matter who it is, a cat, dog, or rabbit, if they do something, I put them to sleep. If a person do something, make them stand accountable. The police are police. Oh, yeah, I get it. We did. They did. They put a lot of bad ones that went through training. I think they need more mental training before they give them. Yes. I think cops need to be put in areas that they can relate to. Yes, okay, I do them. think we should defund them to a certain extent. But think about the ones that really get out here and really care. You know what I'm saying? What about them? Because what happens to them? Them as a whole happens to everybody. Like, what happens to them? What happens to Egypt? What happens to Tiffany? It's affect all of us. Yeah, do. You get what I'm I saying? Do. So I, I just think it's a point of, at that particular time, those cops that kicked in Brianna's door, those were the wrong cops. I believe it could have been a set of cops that could have walked in and everything could have been different. I think there was a, a, a could have been a different set of cops with the Floyd situation. It could have been different. Mm. I think with my own people, a black man killed my daughter. You hear me? A black man. What can you say? Everyone should be stood accountable. Oh, it's, everyone's making it a color thing because that's an easy cop out. Yes. It's an easy cop out. Yep. Okay, well, guess what? We should have been, the world should have been on fire because we've been dealing with this shit forever. Yeah, the world should have been on fire. I think we show a big disrespect to Martin Luther King. We show a big disrespect to Harriet Tubman. I think we show a big disrespect to Muhammad Ali. I think we show a big disrespect to anybody that stood up for us and fought for the things that we have now that we don't fucking appreciate. Mm. So when you get to talking about us talking about the, uh, they did this to us, what about what the hell we have done to ourselves and continue to do? And here at the Opinion Hated Podcast, we are a voice for the voiceless. You exactly. Know what I'm saying? And this platform is for those who have an opinion or they have a say about what's going on within the communities. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, that's why we have these people here to represent their own struggles and what's going on here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could sit here and just let them talk for hours. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to say shit because they represent what's going on out here. Because you know we live this. Yeah. We live this for Make real. stories matter, man. You know what I'm saying? Stories matter.
We so, live for real. And that's the big thing about No Love, the documentary. These are real life stories, real events, real peoples, real tragedies, mm -hmm. real victims. And nothing about this will be edited. Everything will be shown. I want to let the people see the realness of it. And that's mm. what they took away from us. They took church. They took religion. They took the pledge. Everything out of the schools. You know they did that mm -hmm. for a reason. Yep. And we just followed it along. We took it home. Those kids now are, are adults. You understand what I'm saying? When I went to school, we were singing everything. Hey, black child, Pastor was singing that this morning. Do you know who you are? We had to remind ourselves. They took that away from us mm -hmm. so we can easily forget. But I tell you, even in my struggles, my flaws and everything, when I do fucked up shit, I still know I'm Brandy Martin. When I do a good deed, I'm proud to say I'm Brandy Martin. So I just say we need to stop blaming people <laughs> and every person needs to be accountable for their Stay actions. actions. Yeah. Period. And, um, and speaking on the No Love um, documentary, I got something to ask. Um, what you think about therapy, bringing therapy in, in the black households? It as far as speaking it needs, it needs, it needs that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. And we need mental to get out that mentality exactly. that That's we should, right. should not right. sit in front of a therapist. Exactly. exactly. We need to get out of that because we need to talk. We, our ancestors, it, it's like it just go from generation to generation. To We're taught to hold. Exactly. That end. You're not strong if you let it out, if you cry in front of anyone. No, cry. I tell cry anyone that speaks to me, and they, they're calling me about their, their issue or whatever, deal with your emotions. As yep. long as you don't hurt yourself or the next person, you're good. Cry it out. But when you're done, get up, dust yourself, straighten your crown, and walk out. Yep. And I want more. And now let me ask you yeah, a question. Bro. Go ahead. And let me ask a question. You know, now, you know, since we got a, a decent amount of women in here, like, <laughs> how do y'all feel about black men within the community? You know what I'm saying? Like, do what, what do y'all feel about what black men are lacking oh, in right now? Oh, shit. I feel yeah. like there is a lack of protection. There's a lack of respect because they don't know what the woman represents. Mm. You know, um, it stands all around motherland, mother earth. You know what I'm saying? They don't know what the woman is, and they will talk to disrespect the woman. Yeah. You know? I, I, don't, I personally think it's a battle. And it's kind of a double sword because you think about it, the system has designed the black men to be counted out. They have made us Absolutely. cast out our men when it comes to housing, when it comes to public aid and everything. And they have pushed us to push the men to the side. So I can't say it's all the men, but I do think that they need to understand the strength that they possess because these these men come from ancestors and family members that once moved mountains with their bare hands. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? They need to understand that their strength is more mental than sexual. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it should be more enforced. You know, a lot of men, they think because, hey, I'm a man, you know, I, I'm boom, boom. Big kabunas, you know, and that makes me a man. No, the truth of the matter makes you a man is to be to stand strong and make sure that your family and your values are respected, and that's what you display. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. I don't right. think the black man needs much work. He don't need no much work than a black woman do. We all need to be encouraged and motivated. But you know, but you know what, though? Something big that Tia said was about protection. You yeah. know what I'm saying? These black women need protection. Because it's so much shit just happened to them, man. I mean, we don't they, feel safe. Exactly. It's a lack of respect. Exactly. And, Self and, and I can speak from that because mm -hmm. I see a lot of women, no matter what the man do to her, she's going to still try to protect him. She's going to still love him. Yeah. She's going to still Stripping be everything woman. she uh, can. Right, he can right, beat right, up like, like an eye breaker, throw her around the house, lock yeah. her in the room, yeah. kill the dog. She's still going to be yeah. up right trying to cook him something to eat, yeah. wash his yeah. clothes, That's make sure he's okay. You know what you're and us at um, Opinion Headed Podcast, we love black women. We talk yeah. shit, but we love women. <laughs> <laughs> we love women. Yeah. But you have some men that, that, that's out here, and they, they just don't have respect for the women because of their money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you know that. I, I have to say that. That's deep right there. Somewhere down the line, men have lost their way. Either it's the mother that overmotherly him, or it's the father that lacked. That man, like, this is what you do, uh, son. You protect your mom. You protect all women. I remember even way back in the day when the game bangers, you were taught women are off limits, and children are off limits. But it's it's losing that safety -ness with our black men. It's gone. I, I would love to have a king to feel safe because I'm going to protect you. I'm gonna straight up attack you. So do you I feel like men are a little protected. softer nowadays? It's, they are. I think, I think the roles <laughs> change. But you know what? But I don't find nothing wrong with that. Uh -huh. I don't think it's so much of softness because I do 
I would like a man that's in two with his feelings. Because uh, I know back in the day you had like Ralph uh, Trans Man need a but, man with his You know, just be a tech. <laughs> no, no, right, no, no, no. I want to ask you. I want to ask you. I want to explain. I want to explain that. The reason why I say that. Say that again for me, bro. I ain't here. Don't even tell me to be a tech. Don't even say that. 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 Don't even and so that's that that time of thinking is over. I'm, I'm gonna keep it. Well, it's up. always gonna be a good time to think a woman needs a good think, man. Look, you can that's read right. in that's a right. book and remember that as a good old time. But until until and I'm just speaking the 100 shit that y'all know that's real. Until a a nigga ain't judged by the size of his pocket and his dick. That's what it is. You may not want it. That's the truth. Until, it, until a nigga ain't got to look at a woman and say, I'm not, she ain't finna judge me by what I got in my pocket, what I ain't got in my pocket, and how I'm fucking. So until like, he ain't got to look at her like that. What y'all got to say to that, lady? Until, 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 until he look at her and say, as long as I can be a provider, maintain that a protector, I'll be fine. But my red shoes and my shoes ain't red. This is the world that we live in now. Provider. That's right. right we had, okay. You know what kind of world we live in. Alright, let me ask y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me ask the ladies out here. Hold on, bro. Like, let me ask y'all. You know, like, what exactly, what, what's the characteristics that y'all looking to for a man? You know what I'm saying? What's the qualities that y'all looking for? I ain't telling I'm, 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 I'm not telling man. Yeah, what's wrong like with her? Be good. Because like, you, you, ain't, you can't for? tell people what you want because then you know you might have that one person come up and try to give it to you. Oh, I made that right first. Like, you I, you know, know, know what that, that is, though. I can tell you what it is. As far as me, um, I'm not looking at your bank account because I okay. feel like if I love you, I want somebody that is able to mentally get me before a physical. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A lot of times, that's why I, I kind of support that new show they got, where people actually learn to date each other between the wall. You don't actually mm -hmm. get to feel that sexual part until you finally meet. You really get to know a person. I want somebody that can touch me mentally and actually understands me. You know, and willing to grow me, because I come with baggage. And most women come with baggage. You know what I'm saying? Stop saying you, I don't want a woman with baggage. Well, Erica Badu was not the first woman to say it. We've been carrying bags. You know what I'm saying? From the beginning. I just want a strong man that's confident and knows who he is. And in order for him to guide me, he has to know what direction the fuck he's going in. Period. I, I, I do want me, personally, I do want a man that is God-fearing. I want a man that understands and has a relationship with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And a relationship. I, I, I also pay attention to how a man treats his mother. Going back to what Phoebe said, you know, you got to look at, you know, you're talking about mothers and fathers. You think about a lot of these young men were brought up by their grandmothers and aunties. You know, so structure was already broken before they were three year old. You know, so all they know is what they know. And some of these families were really good with supporting with it, but some of them were really shitty too. So a lot of these guys are angry because why was my life fucked up from day one? You so get what I'm saying? A lot of these niggas got baggage out here. As well. exactly. We all have baggage. Everybody got baggage. You know? We all Everybody. got baggage. You know, I, you have to be 16 years old to worry about sex. We're talking about all, every woman in this room is a grown woman. And I know doggone well that they're not seeking the qualities of the size of the draws print. I know doggone well that can't be because the case. Because that don't matter. Because how big your dick is, no matter how you exactly. fuck. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But exactly. I think he's talking about as a whole. Because now I have to agree with him. Because now that's all the females basically talk about. That's all you hear around Young females. Do you it think it's the influence though? Do you feel like about? it's the influence of what's huh? going on to make my the women older you? than you and me put together? <laughs> no, I'm saying it's more younger. No, I'm not. No, no, what I'm saying to you is my mama older than me and you put together. And and she thinks that way. But, that, but that that's, that, that's been happening since the beginning of the time. But so, that goes back to the time. That's been happening since the beginning of the time. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, they Barbara they didn't know they that they Pete was over there around the now corner the sexing on Sally as long as Pete paid her bill and gave her some when she wanted it. 
I want a God fearing man. I'm, 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 be careful what you say, what you am want. Am I right or am I wrong? Because a God fearing like man may not want everything that we do. I mean, I may want a God fearing woman, but she sees something I do and say, that's not God. And she listen, listen. No, no, no. I didn't say that was the main thing. I didn't say that. I didn't say A quality of a God fearing man. That's one of my qualities. And you may not mix up to my quality, so you may not want a wide feeling man. We may want to make sure what we say we I want, keep telling we can represent that. No, I'm not serious about what I'm doing. No, okay, you got to be positive. I, 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 so I, I, just I, maybe, just that. maybe, you, just happen. maybe when that guy <laughs> for a man sit say back and say, say you know what, you do, you be and hit you with the God fearing things. The best projects and the best things came out of being a I speak in manifestation that the man that I meet and desire, that I lock into, that he loves the Lord and respect that. And along with that, I will know that he won't have no problem loving me. So let me ask you why. I got nothing to do with it. I remember Times play a role in modern times. You know what I'm saying? Like, do y'all still feel like, you know, men are supposed to go out here and, you know, take care of the business, bring it home, and the women cook and clean and all that? I don't feel like that. 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 If I have a man. If we sit back and I'm leaving. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Let, well, let him go ahead and finish saying what he's saying. It put me in the matter of Emma Till. If you look at it broadly, like I was listening to one thing that Dave Chappelle was saying. And you know what I'm saying? Look at it broadly. You know what I'm saying? Emma Till was killed by a, 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 a lying ass woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Lying ass white woman. Uh, Let's throw that in now. I was just look. She was killed by a lying ass woman because this, this woman made a lie and, and said what she said about him. He was killed. If it was not for the the, the, the uh, uh, fortitude of his mother allowing his face to be seen. You know what I'm saying? His open casting to be shown for that the world to see what they had did to this little boy. You know what I'm saying? So that the world can look at it and cringe so that white America and everybody else that looked at white America could like, what, is that how y'all doing people? You know what I'm saying? Now, at that time, we couldn't see what good could come above it. You know what I'm saying? Come from that. You know what I'm saying? But that was the catalyst that Martin Luther King, who we all have our, he's, he's not a, a, a big fan of mine in those days because I got my own little thoughts, you know what I'm saying, but I respect this movement. So you it's fuck with uh, Malcolm a little more than you do Martin? Not, not even, look, I, I, I take from them both, you know what I'm saying, right, you know what right. I'm saying, listen, when I see the bullshit, I say, all right with your neck, but that was bullshit, you know what right. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, period, yeah. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, that's just what it is, but you know what I'm saying, it, it puts me in that matter of, 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 of when you look at the looting, we don't know what good could come about with this looting, mm -hmm. you know, we don't know nothing that could come up out of this looting. Because we sit back and say, this is what I know. I've seen a whole lot of mom and pop shops that was black owned. Their saving grace was that they had written in their window, black owned, and your business was your business was saved. But I have no respect for any company that'll sit back with a smile on their face and put a nigga on there, hang it on the tree, and say, this is, this is, this is cloth. Hold on, let me interrupt you real quick, because you you talking about, you know, you got black on in the window, but what about these white businesses who put Black Lives Matter in their window? I say that. Because they're just like, I know you might fuck with black people, but at the same time, come on now, we know why you got that in there. Right, of course. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying a part of that group, but I'm saying that when we look at this looting, when we look at these things that took, that this uprising that took place, these things that happened that took place, you know what I'm saying, all these restaurants, all of these places that was hit, you know what I'm saying, these things weren't black owned, you know what I'm saying, it happened to us, look, look, I'm not, listen, I understand that we didn't do, we didn't, I, it's not good to burn down nobody's stuff, you right, it ain't good to come in my house and shoot my mama, you, you right, you know what I'm saying, it ain't good to go over there, you know what I'm saying, set fire to them people garbage can at that warehouse store, you know what I'm saying, even though we know that they, 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 they selling all that, uh, uh, horse meat to us, but it ain't good because that's theirs and they, they, they brought it up. Just like she said, you said a very powerful thing and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to say it to your face. I'm going to use it in my spoken word when you say, you taught me how to tell my kids in the street. 
But can you tell me how to raise them in the home? You know what I'm saying? Okay. All, 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 all of these things. So when I look at these things as a whole, and I sit back and I look at that looting, and I see on I see on Facebook on how we, as our own people, sitting back shooting at our people, talking about some we helping our people, but we sitting back, like she said, you look dirty motherfucker, yeah out there, stealing you out there, loot. I'm ashamed of your ass. I'm ashamed of your ass. But what about your ass doing the shit that you doing, goddammit? And what about the shit that your ass out there doing? You forget you got all these motherfucking fingers right here. Put it right back at your ass while you're pointing at me. But you don't know. You don't know what may spring up from this from this so, fire. You know what I'm saying? The same fires that burn across the de- the, 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 the the plains of Africa spring up new fruit. You don't know who may come in and say, you know what? You right. These 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 new uh, uh, black owned businesses that's maybe getting their 10k and not showing it. You know what I'm saying? Combat this combat this land. Exactly. To start the store here. They 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 tore down dominance. So this shit is like full circle. No, you know what I'm it, it, like it, this it, shit is full it, circle it, here. It, you know, it, it all it all circles back right. around, and we come so back to the word of accountability. You know but you know, but you know, but you know, the crazy part about it is when you when you on, bro. when you look exactly. at it when you look at it. This is the part that I say. Like I say, I'm not judging nobody. I didn't play a part in it, but uh-huh. whoever did, I got family members that did. You know, I got friends that did. To each his own. But my thing is, why tear up your communities and still go shop in other communities where they asking for your ID to get into I didn't feel like if you're you know going to go saying? tear some shit up, go in that other neighborhood and do that. that shit up. I wouldn't even say do that. If you ain't going to do it, don't do it. If you ain't going to do it, don't do it. We really about trying to tear shit up. Nothing. We Nothing need to be building I mean, this shit up. But, the, but at the same time, it's saying like be, tearing shit up. I'm, only get that's the only way to get their I mean, attention, bro. No, you feel me? Like, but, but what this y'all hey, like, but on that way, bro? Right there, Jeffrey Mountain, bro. What they do? They tore down Dollar General. That's what I'm saying. Burnt that bitch up. But, so like, how about Family Dollar is more expensive, expensive right there street. down the street. Like, what they do? And they own the fucking neighborhood. Sure. See, my thing is, Fuck this is back that. to what the this dollar store is cheap. You know what I'm saying? It's not about, it's not about, it's not about you know what I'm saying, tearing shit up. It's about building shit up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are we steady preaching to motherfuckers that don't give a fuck about us? You know what I'm saying? I just said on a few episodes ago about how, you know, we had Martin and Malcolm out here protesting and, you know, everything goes for us. But at the same time, we steady preaching to people that don't give a fuck about us. Yeah. So why we steady what... wasting time about that? You know what I'm saying? And, and like, when people look at that, and, like, when people look at that shit, they look at us like we whining. Like we whining. Like, why black people steady whining about shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, stop whining about shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, stop whining about shit. And let's just start making shit happen. You know, I don't have all the answers. I don't know what's going to resolve everything, but I do know that everything starts within the home. You know what I'm saying? You got your children out here. You got your ladies out here. You got your man out here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody need to take care of one another and love one another. Mm -hmm. And we need to have respect for one another as well. That's right, You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the basics. That's a good start of a foundation. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, if everybody could have accountability, you know what I'm saying? I'm steady saying the word fucked up because I'm feeling good. Right? Oh, you, I, I'm but, scared. Okay, hey, I, I, we know what we know. We know what we know. Accountability. I heard. Accountability. Because that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, you when know, what like that I said, you know, like, yeah. instead of telling your kids to get the fuck out your face and go find you something to do and let you two raise them, Help. won't you raise them? That's yeah. right. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man, like, I hope y'all listening, man. Like, it, it, I like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not that old, because I know remember back in the day how, you know, it took a village to raise people. That's you know right. What I'm saying? And how that that's what me too. Like, me too. You know, the whole neighborhood would whoop a motherfucker. Hell yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Miss Barbara like would whoop right our ass. But yeah. Miss Barbara can't they say that. Right. Right. Don't we talk to my shorty like that. I will beat your ass. For real. For real. For real. But the kids are telling you themselves now. We children. We start fearing our own children. No, I ain't fear nothing. I'm, no, I'm saying ass. as a whole, not ah. as a one unit, one person, because I don't, everybody know I'm Girl, because I would take a lot. Yeah. But I know what you mean, though, as but far as you feel these kids. our elders, yeah. they terrified. They terrified. They don't even sit on the porch no more. No. Nope. They ain't even sitting in the windows no mm-hmm. more. They don't Man. see what them kids doing. They don't mm-hmm. care. That's because the laws, the laws will never, the laws that have been written has been written now to strip the of all the power. Yeah. That's when what they stopped us from they, whooping their ass. The yeah. laws, first of all, the laws, as, as she said, the laws were never written with uh, us in mind. And then they How about we stop abiding by these laws? Exactly. What you say, stop you know getting validation. Abide by your own laws. 
It's just like, you know, it's just like, start doing what the fuck you want to do. Mm. Stop listening to what another motherfucker exactly. tell you. Exactly. And just because it's a law, like, and just because it's a law, don't make it right. You know what I'm saying? Just because the law, it don't make it right. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm not mistaken, then I don't know what amendment. What's that? The 13th Amendment, we two-thirds of a person. I mean, we not even a whole person out here. Correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but, like, they been not fucking with us. So, therefore, why are we steady paying attention to their laws and their rules and living by their way? That everybody want to make this a race issue. It's been a race issue. We didn't make it a race issue. The issue was brought to us. We didn't make this a race issue. If you notice, every black person, we have empathy towards all races. Yes, yes all right. races. It doesn't matter what happens to those Thank people. You. But what we I all is, are empaths towards hey. those people, and we all are willing to help those people if we see them in need, no matter what race or creed they are. The race issue's been brought to us because the color mm. of our skin. Because the magic we hold. I think so when it comes to a race that, thing, yes, I'm all I'm 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 always gonna talk about that because that is the truth. We also need it's to open truth. our eyes and, and and realize like okay, yeah, it wasn't a race issue with us. No, it wasn't. No, and it ain't. It was a, a, every day we step out the crib, it ain't a race issue with us. But we know it is with them. So some of the ways we move, I think we need to move a little different and, and, and realize like okay. We don't have to be racist as we move. We, we still need to, to look at like, oh, okay, like the way they treat us, we still need to reciprocate that shit. Like holding a door open. S- simple little shit. You go to the grocery but see, store, that's because you hold the door open, don't nobody don't say do shit. Don't do it to others what they do. They don't say you. thank you, shit like that. Okay, certain little ways we move, if we do little things, one by one, we need to realize like shit, the, the way they treat us, we need to treat them. We need to realize, like, okay, all that little shit, they think they privileged. A lot of times, we'll hold it on, they don't say shit. Uh, oh, okay, it's cool to them. Oh, yeah. we supposed to do that? I think our power, I think our power comes from. We need to, we need to, uh, put more value I'm not saying our power comes from that. I'm saying our power comes from, treat them how the fuck they treat them. I don't think our power comes from that. Because at the same time, the way they move, like, oh, you supposed to I don't think our power comes from that. I don't think our power comes from that. I'm supposed to get on that. I don't think our power comes from us doing to them what they did to us. You feel what I'm saying? I don't uh-huh. think our power comes from that. I think our power comes from what they do to us. We need to start loving us even more. Every yeah. time they top, top that dollar. You feel what I'm saying? And with that, then you are you stand righteous if he kills your son and you kill him. Our power don't stand come together. from hating them. That's not our power. Now, the first move, I'm not saying hating them. I'm saying treat them how they treat us. Small things. Oh, I got you. Small things as in, okay. Can I say this? I think think we need to value each other more. Yes. That's the problem. That's why I said we need to love us more. Every time they do something to to us, we need to... One thing I dislike is when we persecute our own and family. I don't want to come down to customer service. Customer service is a big thing. I hate that. Remember, people. This is what I want to do. Like, real talk. When you look at certain shit, I want to return something. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 they look like, man, you, you, you just hit my pockets. I'm going to fuck with you. Did you do this? Did you do that? And you know, you know, you a know, lot you know, of times we need to remember as black people, period, we are kings and queens. We are totally kings and queens. People are a fear of what could be powerful over them. But if it's money, another race, whatever, people are in fear of power. If I let you get up over on me, then you will have power over me. So when someone of another race fear us who's not supposed to be human, that means they are fearful of our power. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep the individual down. So you're going to feed them in their ear, whoever listening to you, I'm going to feed her something negative about her. And then she says it's going to automatically take their opinion because she believes you because you're more superior than her. That it's, it's a mind and a mental thing. So instead of us treating people how they treat us, we have to treat them as we're kings and queens. We got to walk with authority. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And when I walk in a room with a bunch and of confidence. people that's different from me, I have less money. But baby, when I walk in there, you swear I have a lot of money. I don't even have to wear the clothes. It don't have to be name brand. It's how I walk. My head is high. And 
I see a person that is not of my race. Hello, how are you? And that's it. And I'm going about my business. I don't have to treat you because you're sniffing your nose up at me. I don't have to do that. And they get you. shit like, oh. Hey, how so are you? So you have knowledge that's yourself. You know what I'm saying? Self. And I feel like exactly. that's what a lot of people lack. Lack. I get to say. Yes. You know, like you have knowledge. Like, I get to say. Oh, they speak so well. You know? Yeah. What, they weren't supposed to? No, not me. I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, you know, because like I said, you know, like, you know, I fuck with Malcolm and Martin and whoever else prior to us, you know, but I just feel like we spent so much time trying to convince certain people that, you know, we should be acknowledged, that we should be at a certain level and we should have certain respect. But, you know, when you don't respect yourself and you don't respect that's one right. another, that's that's how the fuck you going to ask for that type of respect? That that's true. You don't even know your, your value. Fuck. Like, my thing is, stop spending time with these folks. They don't give a fuck about you. And you they don't give a fuck about your, you your struggles. Here. They don't give a fuck if your mama smoke crack. If, if your daddy smoke crack, they, your daddy in jail, they don't give a fuck about none of that shit because all they care about is themselves. Yeah. So when the fuck are we going to start caring about ourselves and, yeah. and representing that out here? You know what I'm saying? And, like, and, and make it kind of hard for other people to respect that when you steady out here killing one another. Like I, said to, like I said to the sister earlier, mm-hmm. on that note, we're not looking at it like that. Speaking for the brothers on the street, like, they got love. There's mm-hmm. love that's out there. It's a, it's, it's a crazy love. But I said, like, you can take a little baby song. I said this before. You can take a little baby song. I'm overprotective. I go crazy for mine. And right, you, you a little bit older than too. You a little bit older than me. You know what I'm saying? Can you can you tell motherfuckers what gang banging came from? You know what I'm saying? Because like, if we want to talk some street shit, what what's the origin or the the you know what I'm saying the origination of that? You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was about protecting one another. Exactly. From the community. Uh, and the community. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like and it got turned into something different. Yes, yeah, sir. It was a shift in, in in the actual code of it. But that's because we were told that. that's Exactly. No, was, no. I crazy. actually watched it unfold. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, um, I, I choose to go the path I choose to go. But I have family members and all and friends and stuff. And I had my my uncle used to run park. You know, Parkway. You know what I'm saying? And I watched this as a small a kid growing up. The structure changed right before our face. Mm-hmm. You know, my grandfather was robbed, and the game bangers fa- seen him getting robbed and stopped the robbery, put his money back in his pocket, and took him home, pissy drunk. You know what I'm saying? I watched this stuff unfold in front of my face. Yes, game banging got took into a whole nother level. There was a shift. There was a shift in what the meaning was actually behind it. It became more about the corners and more mm-hmm. about the money than it became about the purpose. The people too. And the people. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Black Panthers was a gang. They just was Black Panthers. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that was structured, any organization that has more than six or better is a gang. Yep. Mm-hmm. Is a gang. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? But then you got motherfuckers out here like the KKK. They still can walk and march and do yeah. whatever the fuck they want. We're too short of a game. Right. We too short of a game. I mean, all kidding the bullshit aside, we no matter what we do, we ain't got no black town. Mm-hmm. They got Chinatown. In every fucking city. Hey, but shit, you talking about we ain't got no black town? Like, shit, what you they talking about? They just built one. They just built one. motherfucking city. Yeah, they These just built one. These suburbs and everything is black towns. But, but, you know what, what Hold on, what my brother saying is, is this certain part of, you know, the community. You know what I'm saying? When do you go in and feel like, even it's if like even up, Look, I'm over there. I can go over there on 87 in Madison right now. It ain't nothing but black people over there. And I'm going to feel like the opposition. I'm, I'm just saying, it's like, what do you go with to feel at home? What do you go with to feel like, you know what I'm saying, this is your, these, these, are your, these are your people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care what nobody say, Mexicans can go and go, and everybody be, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Chinese people, all of these, and that's no disrespect to nobody, because everybody know me, I'm silly like this, okay? They can go where they can, where can we go? Shit, you go where the fuck you want to go, as long as you feel like you belong there. Huh? Where can you, but where can you go? Look, you go get, look, you go, you go anywhere. Look, you know what I'm saying? You got to act like you belong there. You got to act like you believe there. Can't nobody tell you you can't go nowhere where you don't 
we when you don't want to be there. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm a strong believer that our lives are all set and designed as a stage. You were born an actor and an actress because you set your own platform. You put people in your life, you put environments and places and different things in your life that you allow to be there. Mm -hmm. So if you find a place that you are uncomfortable with, there's either two things. Either the people made you uncomfortable or you have not, going back to what they said, you're not comfortable with yourself. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That that would cause you to feel out of, out place. of place. You yes. know what I'm saying? Going back Speak to that identity. Shit. identity. Yeah. You Speak know, that shit. Like, going back to what Phoebe say, when I walk in the room, I don't care who I walk in the room with. And I didn't graduate from college. But when I walk shit, in that room, I ain't graduate I'll from high up, school. Guess what? But I can sit at the table with the best of them. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because of my confidence and I'm strong in who I am. Now, don't take it from what I'm saying. I'm still developing. I'm a work in process. But I know the foundation of me. You get what I'm saying? And going back to what Ezra was saying earlier, when we started this, and I hate we keep going back to it, but it was just a big major part that hit all these cities. Look at how they have formatted. Most of the poverty-stricken areas, they're not going to put back or rebuild the things that we have lost. You understand what I'm saying? Some things are irreplaceable. You get what I'm saying? The mom and pop stores, some of those are generations and generations and generations that were Amen. passed down. You understand? They didn't have no insurance, although mm -hmm. they've been there 18, 25, 30 years. You get what I'm saying? They're going to put in our neighbors. I stay in Inglewood. They're going to replace the store that I need to go get diapers and milk and stuff from. Just, just saying. With computer, um, with a computer, um, we're going to fix your computers. That's some shit we can't even use in our right. community. Starbucks. We can't even afford the Starbucks. Like Starbucks. They're going to they take put Starbucks our stores. Are everywhere, man. Whole what? Foods. They're going to take our stores that we need to go buy toothpaste and stuff at. They're going to mm -hmm. give us a Starbucks that we can't even afford to buy a damn coffee. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So there is a lot. Like I said, it's a double sword with the loot thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some great things might flourish from it. You know, people might have some eye openers. But the real part is, the things that we thought we were making them suffer from, who's really suffering? Because mm -hmm. I suffered the next morning. Yeah, I we suffered. Did. I couldn't find no place we to give me no blunts. I suffered. Yes. I couldn't find yes. me no cocoa but pebbles. I suffered. The second make the sacrifice never reach the benefits. But the thing is, I've this, never seen one person this make thing a could be way more deeper than yeah. I can see. Maybe you were made to put in an uncomfortable situation to where you can't depend on to get that for you to go get it yourself. Maybe this is God's way of showing you or telling you to get up and go get it for yourself. No, what, you what he to... showed me was, Tia, is that I had to go to Indiana and show an ID because they but, didn't want to let that took people from Chicago go. Though. That, that showed me when I went to the curse exchange because someone sent me but some money for my daughter's event. I could not get my money <laughs> because they didn't want to get people <laughs> from the south side, no Western Union. But sometimes you get broken down to build back up. And sometimes you well, break the government down. Don't break me down. Who is the government? 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 Who is we have become we don't a lazy people. We don't know how to feed ourselves. We have become a lazy people. That's what we need. I can agree with that. Everything is a lazy Everything. I can agree with that. Oh, what both of y'all said. If the next morning we can wake up and still have food in our mouth, that's what we need. Oh, what if the next morning we can wake up and still have the things we had? But we. No, no. What we did was we went other places to get it. Now, if we had to just stay home and say, I'm going to fucking wake this out, that's a real trooper. Yep. That means getting it for yourself. Not when you had to travel and go somewhere else because guess what? You needed it. You needed it. Mothers, mothers needed formula for their children. Mothers should have been Mothers needed, mothers needed diapers for their children. Senior citizens needed their medicine. I don't understand her aspect. I get her aspect, but what I'm saying is you can't take away from the dynamic that you don't know. Like I had to ride around from one neighborhood to the next just to get some milk from Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question so you can really understand where I'm coming from. Fuck trying to get it for yourself. Most of everybody in here is black. We've been taught a long time ago the struggle is real. The lights go out, burn a motherfucking water candle. Yep. You know what I'm saying? The gas go off, you get a hot plate. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You ain't got no heat, you get a heater. We've mm -hmm. been taught that. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to tell you is, what if it was your son that woke up the next day and needed a hella and couldn't get a goddamn hella? And I'm going to go up and go I'm get it. I'm not trying to hear nothing mm -hmm. about what the lesson was. The fact was, your child could have lost their life due to the, they didn't have the things that and they you have got a point. because and, other and, people and, thought bigger than that. All she's saying is be mindful of the people that you, you got a point. You impact yes. him, man. She has a Just point. Be mindful. Well. 
You know what I'm saying? All. It's just like, y'all niggas out here tearing shit up. But you got to remember, where the fuck y'all going to get the shit that y'all need from? Yeah, 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 yeah I get you. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, my stove got caught up in that. My stove got caught up in that. But how he go against everything that he was doing in his life, So if Django, if, 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 if uh, what was, we gonna call him Snowflake, I don't know the fuck his name. <laughs> but uh, uh, Samuel Jackson in there. Yes, if if he was not Calvin, yeah. he wouldn't have had his life. So sh- so should we look at him like that? <laughs> so sh- sh- should we look at him? Look, look, look. I mean, sure, whoa, 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 let me pause that. Them slave, them slave, them same, them same, them same niggas that was on them boats, <laughs> what? steering them, steering them white people this way to go get our people. The same people that are screaming, I'm black too. Same house niggas though, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm glad we're out here talking about it. Wait, wait, hey. you need your family. <laughs> <laughs> you need your family. 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 You won't change. Here. You yeah. won't yeah. change. Yeah. You won't change from a people who won't change. I hear you, okay? bro. You won't change from a people who won't change. So it okay, ain't going nowhere. Okay, listen. Won't change from the people who won't change. Everybody in here keeps saying the same thing that we been keep saying and we keep been keep doing for the last whole thirty years and got you what? Same place, just a different, just a different set of bars. Just a different set of bars. We all sit up in here now trying to figure out who we go vote for. The uh, 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 the orange man number forty five who don't like us or the woman like the little girl. They say he vote for the lesser. All right. hey, but I'm glad that this brother brought up what he was saying. You know what I'm saying? He's talking about these Uncle Tom ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? And everything else. Oh, hold on, give me a minute, brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to uh, bring in this week's bitch ass nigga of the week. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad he brought me into this one because I was going in this motherfucker without that. No, man, speak on that because I want to get y'all, you know, y'all opinion on this. Yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? Why we talking about this shit? This week's bitch-ass nigga of the week go to Daniel Cameron. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty sure everybody by attorney now General. know who Dan- Daniel Cameron is, and he's the attorney, the attorney general of Kentucky, you know? And uh, he's the nigga who's responsible, you know what I'm saying, pretty much with that verdict for Breonna Taylor. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, like, we pretty much don't fuck with that. And, you know, like, depending on who you are, you might feel like Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal probably, you know, probably get that award as well. But, you know, we're going to focus on Daniel Cameron because he's a black man. And, you know, of course, he got a white woman at the crib, too. You know, whole white family and everything. And I feel like everything that he decided on was for a personal gain. Yeah. You know, political game. Yeah, you know I, what I'm saying? Agree. And it goes to, you know, when we talking about them forks and rolls in life and when you sitting up here and you out here and you doing certain things in life, it's going to come to a point where you got to keep your integrity. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, you're going to do some bitch ass shit like him. You know what I'm saying? And pretty much he's the reason why Breonna Taylor has that one time endangerment. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel as if, like, you know, motherfucker can't get a manslaughter charge at least. Nothing. You know, no first, second, third degree murder. But I mean, accountability, though. I mean, he the attorney general and the officers lied on the report. You know, so with all that being said, you know, everybody who your skin folk ain't your kin folk. Most definitely. They just skin folk. They skin folk. But he was just, his decision in those things is only, is only to make sure that his family stay cool. Yes. It's so about can I be mad at him? Yeah. Can I be mad at him? And I'm, I'm just being, I'm just, there's no shots at nobody. Can I be mad at him when I'm looking at, looking at it like that? I, I, I take that, I take that walk. You know what I'm saying? And I got to think about, well, my baby need this in the morning. I can't get that. You know what I'm saying? This nigga it, sound like he would have did the same you know, shit. Oh, hold on. 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 To better your position, though. I mean, would you take that stand? If I was the attorney general, huh? Hell no, the motherfuckers would be dead already. Do you hear me? Like, listen. Look, look. Try it. Look, this is what it is. You niggas gonna lie? I'm trying to help you. You niggas gonna lie. Right, look, if I was even trying 
had to cover my ass. If it was a smart house nigga, he at least tried to cover it up up until the paperwork got out. Yeah, that they got it on their thing. I, I kind of feel like it shouldn't matter the position, bro. Right, right is right and wrong no, is wrong. Right. You yeah, feel me? Right. Right. It shouldn't matter. No, no I'm position. Even if he tried to, at least he could have at least tried to lie. You know what I'm saying? Up until the point where the paperwork came out. Now you got to go ahead. You got to put him out and, there. But no, that's some and that's why And that's why we don't fuck with the case. But so, that's what's I mean, so, the whole all that being said, what's your point? Feel like he was okay with doing what he was doing? Oh hell no, nigga! Don't okay. go over the boat. All right, sharks. so that's the only thing. And, that and, and it's stupid, bro. And, and, and just going back to what you said about his paperwork. I mean, the officers that did the shooting they reported that no injuries to Breonna Taylor that night. Mm-hmm. Let, let's not forget that there. no injuries. Yeah. You shot that's eight times. Mm-hmm. No injuries mm-hmm. on the report. The, yeah, no knock on on warnings. I'm sure you brothers already know, man. No knock warnings. The, 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 the very definition of a no knock warning is entry into the it's entry into the house. It's really game for those people who are extremely dangerous. They're not going to sit there and announce themselves as the police because they're expecting you to be violent. So that's why they that's why judges grant no knock warrants. But wait, but the no knock warrants to the wrong house. But when yes. I when that's what I was about to say. When this story first came it out, it was the wrong house, so the right? Wrong house. Mm-hmm. So and then the person suspect is already locked up. Yeah, the suspect is already locked up. He's locked up right? forty five minutes right on the right other side of town. You know, and on top of everything, guys. Yeah, I know I ain't did nothing wrong, and I hear some footsteps in my house. So I'm gonna shoot first, right. too. Right, exactly. Right. And then on top of that, Mr. Walker, he gave off one shot. The police shot back twenty something. Twenty. Times. Times. Officer yep. Cosgrove, sure. who Over shot a shot sixteen times into our yeah. house, man. Over sixteen you know, times. And then for Daniel Cameron. But did y'all hear about the house? The people next door. Yeah. They all got reparations for that. They all got money for it. What? Yes. Yeah. And because just speaking of three bullets, um, and just three some bullets. Yeah, they they all the neighbors, yeah. so they got money for the mother, the daddy, and the child. Yeah. Endangerment. Yep. Yep. It was and they made some law. They finna come out with a new law for them. Oh, yep. man. But for her, on, she man. just... But, yeah, but let's, got a new law come now. on, let's, let's address the elephant in the room, though. I mean, a family got... Thirteen million dollars. Twelve million. Twelve million. Twelve million. But nobody got held accountable for the death. You know, and they're like, that's 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 what the family fighting for it. Behind the scenes, is they really fighting for it? Did they sign some paper saying they want to pursue it? You know they 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 might have. I mean, you know they come with the twelve million, man. It ain't ain't really going. It's some paperwork. But at the same but time, we I don't got the like facts here, man. Wrong for taking that money, you know what I'm saying? Because I, the way I look at it, that's the least you could do. I, I, you, you know, know what? what though? I ain't like, gonna say that, bro. I just kind of feel like what you do with the money. Don't, don't let that shit go in vain, bro. Of her name, bro. You know what I'm saying? Then the uh, attorney general wrong wrong for protecting his family. No, because everybody wrong in this situation. I'm I just feel saying. Like, oh, no, 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 no. I feel like if they offered you the bread, he wrong for that. That's if they that's an admission of fault. Right, right. When they don't say that, I'm gonna tell you that. And with that, I'll turn it down because y'all is admitting y'all right. won't do it. Hey, right. You know what I'm saying? So I got y'all corner like, right there. I'll put it like this. Yeah, right. I'll put it like this. Hold on, bro. Hold on. I'll put it like this. If you offer me some right. bread for a situation like that, I'll take it. But like, if you come to me and you got me signing NDAs or NBAs or whatever the fuck that shit called, then I'm going to leave that shit alone. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, if you're going to offer me the money, fuck it. I'm going to take it. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, it's not like people are in a better off position because, like, unfortunately, that young lady lost her life. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's nothing that's going to bring they her ain't back. nothing going to replace that. No You know settlement. what I'm saying? Nothing at all. No, nothing. No, but I do know nothing. that money will provide a better way for anybody after her. You know what I'm saying? For any kids, any little cousins, any nephews, anybody of that nature – you know what I'm saying? That will provide a better opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Now, unfortunately, Miss Breonna Taylor, she has to be a martyr, you know what I'm saying, for that exactly, cause. Exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But so you can decide what it is that you want to do, but there's no wrong or right way about it. Can it be can in I a discussion, see? brother, when the, in the clear law, it's, it's a no-knock warrant. You are not addressing your entry into the residence. I mean, well, you know, like. But okay, know. bro, I got, a, I got a question for you right there, though. Hold on, you say it's a no knock, right? right. A no knock one, I, and I had so to. I don't see that, right? But, don't think, but, don't think but you say that's for the people that's orange and dangerous, right? right? That's when they kicking your door. They coming in looking for they. Ain't, this is the police. But they kicking in your door and you woke up to them. I got a question for you though, brother. If, I mean, if they so dangerous, why send three officers? You know what I'm saying? No, they, they supposed to send more. I mean, when you. Are My point dangerous. exactly. So how dangerous so what's was your they stance though? On this? What's your stance on this? I'm trying to get exactly what you said. I know I said what's I your stance on the whole situation? 
I mean, clearly in the law, this is a no not one. So, no, so you feel like the situation was justified? Hell no. So what you saying? I'm saying, this is what I'm saying. This is no not one. That means you cannot address yourself. So you're lying. Right. So they lied you making they yourself. Uh, uh, when he said you came in the house and you did not address yourself, yeah. that sounds like this no not one. Okay? He shot. Do he have what license and stuff to have that gun and things like that? Once all that stuff is settled, okay, he shot. You, I'm not even finna address that you ain't even at the right residence right now. We still be talking about this is a no not one. Right. It's gonna sound like to me an incredible thinking person who know to put milk onto their cereal. This is a no not one. You oh you kicked in this man though he shot and then you shot back. You did not say that you came in and you the announced police. yourself as the police because that goes against you having a no not one. That would go against all the time and effort that you spend coming to this judge, this judge to ask for a no not warrant. Yeah. Now, I can't be a, 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 a lawyer, but I've studied. So if I know that, I'm damn sure that motherfucker who should have been thrown into the crocodile house. He should have. Yeah, but that's that's the like, you know, that's, that's why so we don't fuck with the case. Man said, what you saying? You saying that the police, you know, or the whole situation overall... And the decision that Daniel Cameron made was justified? Or Hell no. Saying? I'm saying the police entry into the house is bogus. Okay. They're, they're entering the house is bogus because they got the wrong motherfucking address. And they, they said that they did not they, enter. They address themselves when I already know your ass didn't address your motherfucking self. Right. Because so you got to know my I'm saying, saying that the they line. line. Exactly, that they line. But the oh, law, but, but the clear law, the clear uh, warrant, the no not warrant itself is all the evidence you need. That's all the evidence I would need, you know what I'm saying, as a writ writer, a jailhouse lawyer, to get you out of that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a no not one. But the, they will, be, they will not right. address themselves. It is not. The, the procedures not. that they got to go through to get a no not one versus a regular one. It's two different procedures. You got to go to a grand jury to get that no yeah, not one. We warm. know that, but after that, though, I mean, after all that shit was established and everything, but what about the uh, initial report of the police officers that was on the crime, though? That on the same. You feel me? That, I'm, yeah, yeah, so go into that though. I mean, because the phone was already locked up the night before. Right, and that's what right. I heard. Right. I know I wasn't going. They did. Yeah, they, yeah. they said he yeah. locked up okay. for forty-five he was minutes. Locked up. But then they said on the report that it was they did not force entry. When you see the pictures, they knocked the door off the hinge. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's so many holes in so this report lies. to where it's shit just don't make sense. So back at, back to it, man, bitch ass nigga of the week. Then you can. Somebody should have been reprimanded. Yes. Like, yes. Even if you don't want to hold the officers accountable for that, you should have hold whoever written up that warrant accountable for that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Somebody should have been reprimanded. Nobody was held accountable for that situation. So therefore, you know, whoever them officers are, they still allowed to do whatever the hell it is that they yep. do. You know what I'm saying? The warrant if the address was if the address was accurate and they didn't go to the right place. You've seen enough of that on, 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 on what's that? Dun, dun, law and order. Yeah. If they kick in the wrong door. So, you know, with that being said, the bitch ass nigga that we go is Daniel Cameron. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we pretty much gonna wrap everything up. Yep, yep. And, Be on the lookout, uh, man. Know, now, as far as like no love on the platform, no love the documentary, and no love on the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, tell us, you know, where this come from. Okay, first off, um, I want to correct, not correcting you, but um, uh, no love on the platform, no love in the streets is actually a foundation that I started. My sister was killed on a red line train on 69th Street in 2019, and six days later, my daughter was shot on the streets on 42nd and Wheels. So I put together No Love on a platform for my sister and when my daughter died, I put No Love on the streets and combined them together and came up with No Love on the platform, No Love on the streets. Everything since then, since the foundation and since their deaths, that's implicated up under that. Cause see, I'm in the music industry as well. Okay. People know me for Big Red Entertainment. So I tried to make this separated a little bit, working together, but separated. So, because this is a personal issue for me. Everything about No Love on the Platform, No Love on the Street is personal. That's Brandy Martin's issues. Big Red issues, it shows and promoting and stuff like that. So I want to show people there is a difference in between it, although I'm the same person behind okay. it. Um, the name of the documentary is No Love, The Documentary. Okay. And the documentary at first was based upon their stories. I started in September 12th of last year. Speed it up. Just got started back on it a couple of weeks ago. The No Love, the documentary is basically all spring for the No Love on the platform, No Love on the street. Everything that I'm going to do up under the organization that comes with community and any of the topics that's being discussed, such as gun violence, um, police brutality, bullying, negligence, um, sex trafficking, kidnapping, 
Those issues that I'm discussing all fall up under the no love on the platform, no love on the streets. But the documentary is the no love. And in that documentary, it's dedicated to the men, women, and children of untold, unsolved, and forgotten cases. I'm not just doing cases that's been um, national news from 2020. I've went back to 18, 20 years. Bringing back old cases such as the Bradley sisters, Yami, that died in Roseland and things like that. I want to highlight cases, not only the cold cases, but the cases that I'm forgetting about. People, are, families are still waiting by the phone, waiting for a call to find out what happened to their family members or if their family members are still alive. And some mothers like myself and, and sitting out here, we're still looking for justice and peace peace and justice. So that's the purpose behind the No Love on a Documentary is to actually give people the opportunity. I feel like strongly right now, the world, the way we end, the world has took a shift. And in the midst of this shift, a lot of things have happened that's much bigger than COVID. You understand what I'm saying? Mental illness is real. That's going on a lot. And that's coming from the tragedies and the weight down from the ways of the world that a lot of us are experienced like myself. I speak from a place, I, I suffer from PTSD, anxiety, and depression because of the tragedies that I have experienced and the things I have seen in my life. And I just feel like no love was a, a way to not say it's going to make everything better, but it's going to give people a chance to release and also to reach out and give awareness and to hopefully find peace and some justice for some of these families that's involved. Yep. You know, so that's what No Love on the, um, the documentary is about. And I put the documentary because every documentary that everybody um, does is dope. It's original. You know, I just want mass to stand out. So I added a couple of things to it as Easter eggs to make sure that it's the documentary. Gotcha. You know, like black-owned gotcha. commercials in the middle of it. No one's ever done that. So I'm going to put black-owned commercials, you know, a couple of businesses from around Chicago in the midst of my documentary to get them advertising. I bought dope artists and formed an amazing No Profanity soundtrack. You know what I'm saying? And I got real-life stories, real people, real victims. Mm -hmm. Real crimes, no edits. You know, the news and the media, you know, and all the men's getting out there doing what they do, that's fine. But it, you will look at it a whole lot different when you can see a mother like me who has lost her child from gun violence that tells my story of my daughter, Keela Addison, or my sister, Falon Smith. You know, so that's, that's what no love is about. No love is actually about showing that there really is love. Because I'm going to show that. I'm going to show people I love you enough whether I know you or not to make sure that you know that your children are your mother, your lover, your cousin, your friend, your grandmother, your auntie, your brother. They were important. And somebody bigger than an activist, bigger than this, or bigger than this. I'm not an activist. I'm just a person that give a fuck about what goes on in my block, my neighborhood, my community, and my city, and the outskirts, and the world. So no love, the documentary is actually going to show that there is really love. I'm going to show the up and down parts of it. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, y'all stay tuned. Most definitely yeah, stay yeah, tuned. Shout out to Bases definitely. Loaded. They're shooting this documentary. And it's six episodes, you guys. Please stay tuned. Six episodes are nothing but heartfelt stories. And I'm asking that everybody, not only that you watch this documentary, that you support it. And also, people, I want them to see that time stops after everything is over with. Most people believe that once the funeral was over with, that there's no more worries. I got a bunch of people sitting out here that's proof that there is. We're, we're left with a lot to deal with. We're, each individual sitting out here, we're still dealing with the Everybody hurt. Everybody in this room. Everybody, Everybody. out here. It, we're dealing with still the hurt and the pain. And I want to show them that. For me, a big piece of me died. But a big piece of me got a rebirth too. And that's why I'm opening it up and make sure that all these stories... And everything is told with dignity and respect. Because we want, we, want, we want some answers. We want some peace. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll get some, some healing out of this. Most yeah. definitely. Your story most definitely strengthened people, though. You know, Thank Sitting you. here, I'm a um, victim of gun violence myself. Okay. You know, so uh, you can definitely relate. Yeah, yeah. I got a shot on my neck when I was four. I was a child. You wow. know what I'm saying? So I'm here, I'm here for a reason. And so that goes back. I say this yeah. all the time. You know, I said this in a commercial. I was like, it's crazy how you can be in a room of 20 people and all y'all fly. And you won't actually have no idea that everybody possess a scar that you can't even see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why they say it's not good to envy people because you don't know the scars that they got along yes. the way to get the things yes. that they get. My testimony comes from tests that I have been through, and I'm proud of them. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, I lost my child in the process, but... Man, all the way to the heavens, Akilah and Fallon, they're the inspiration to make sure that 39 mm -hmm. other stories get told that people forget about. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm turning pain into purpose. 
That's good. That's what we need. So y'all show y'all support. Most definitely. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you know, I appreciate you coming through. I yeah, appreciate yeah. you having us. Y'all been a good guest. 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 And this is y'all first yeah. show with this many people. Yeah. 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 Any guests? Yeah, it's just for sure. We know what I'm saying? We kind of like it, man. Yeah, y'all smoking, man. So I just want to tell you guys thank you, but I also want to say thank you to Prince Egypt, Tiffany Frank, my girl, Shavonda, right? Shavonda? Savanda, Ocho, Ocho, Mexico, my girl Phoebe, Crepe, um, Tia Somber, and Passion, and also Troy Thompson. I yep. also want to shout out Chocolate Berry, Fox Montana, um, Fella Soul, and all the other dope people that are a part of this. There's so many people. This is not even a, a third of the people that's involved in this. I'm asking my city to get behind me, too. October the yeah. 3rd, we will be out filming on 130th in Ashland. We're asking everybody to come out and support these families. Show them that they are loved, that people are still remember about, remembered and thought about. I want people to forever say their names. Mm. Yeah, you must wear. We are asking that uh -huh. everyone come out. You will not be recorded in the in the film. You must have on a, a picture of a um a loved one you lost or that's missing, or you must have on a t-shirt that represents any of the topics that are being discussed in the documentary. Yeah. That is the only requirement. We're gonna feed you, we're gonna love on you, we're gonna network with you we got entertainment Let's for come you together. And, and we got the press out there and I, I just ask that everybody remember that you are coming amongst people who have all suffered and went through traumatic things in their life and that you'll be respectful of what's yeah. going on it is a family show affair but it's a family show love. and show love and be respectful with it but yeah, y'all, I applaud you, gentlemen. You know, we we doing some of the same things. I ask that people continue to support you. Y'all, you guys prayed before the show started. Yeah, and that yeah. did, that made me feel like I'm not going to even lie. And I'm not a judgmental person, but it made me feel more comfortable because no matter what you're talking about, this is opinion-hated show. Y'all kept God in it first. That's and right. that's what I'm doing with this movie. I'm letting him walk me all the way through it. You know what I'm saying? And, and show people that outside of you seeing us cussing and us drinking and us doing, we're still people that give a fuck about the world. So I applaud y'all for that. And continue okay. to share them stories and keep talking about things that are relevant to us because we need to be heard, even if it's through two guys mm. behind the mic. You get what sure. I'm saying? Sure. And I appreciate everybody. Yeah. You know, shout out to the whole entire cast. Thank, Thank you. you. Know Thank y'all. Thank you. Yeah. The no love. Again, like, yeah. No love. The anybody documentary. Anybody y'all got any social media or anything? Yeah, Instagram. Instagram. Shout y'all. Shout it out. What's up? I'm Prince Egypt. You can find me on all social media. Prince Egypt, the artist. That's Prince Egypt. D A hyphen or apostrophe, whichever way you want to go do it, because it's gonna bring you next to artist. Artist, oh, can I finish? Prince Egypt, the artist. <laughs> you know what? Put my mask back on. <laughs> you got Tiffany Frank. Yep, just Tiffany Frank on all social media. T I F F A N Y, last name Frank F R N K. Okay. I only got Facebook. Siobhan Morris, last name M O R E N S. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram at Ocho Mexico. O C H O M E X I C O and whatever else you want to type it in that you can find me there too. <laughs> Got you, bro. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Lashawn L A S H A W N, last name Crape C R A P E, or Instagram at the Epitome of Style. Gang. <laughs> you can find me on all social media by T E apostrophe A Songbird on Instagram. It's just T E A underscore Songbird. And I'm Passion Dreamer. You can follow me across all social media sites at P A S H Y E N 515. And I am Brandy Martin. You can find me on Facebook under Brandy Martin, Brandy with a Y. Or you can Google me at Big Red Entertainment. That's Big Red with two D's, E N T. Or you can simply look me up under No Love on the platform, No Love on the Streets. And now you can look me up under No Love. Google me. Yep. Google me. Yeah, I appreciate everybody being out here tonight. You know, once again, this is the Opinion Hated Podcast. I'm Ace. I'm Joe. And I'm Big Red. This Opinion Hated.